Um, it's the state of the market call, right? So we've got to talk about what's going on in the market. We'll bounce some thoughts back and forth and make sure that we, we give you guys what you need to know uh, so that you can be successful as we head into the end of this year and uh, into a what I think is going to be a very profitable uh, 2023. The energy sector is full of really great value stocks. And it's one of the reasons that that, in, that area has done so well this year. And one of the reasons why I expect uh, energy stocks to do quite well headed into 2023. Now, over the last few weeks, we've seen a pullback for oil and natural gas prices. The actual dollar amount that it costs to buy a barrel of oil or uh, gasoline or whatever. Um, and, and that is actually, you would think that that would drive energy stocks lower. But as it turns out, energy stocks have actually held up really, really well. And that's because they are still trading at a discount to what you really could say they are worth. And it's because investors are still trying to figure out, do they want to be invested in this area of the market? Is there long-term value in this area of the market? Now, I think there is, uh, and that's why I really want to be buying uh, many of these energy stocks at a discount price compared to their profits right now. And these, these companies also pay some of the best dividends that you can get in the market. Um, the energy companies are consistently paying money back to their shareholders, uh, and there are all kind of political and logical reasons why they're doing this. We'll sidestep those for today. You probably know uh, a lot of what I'm talking about. Um, but the main point is that these companies pay investors to hold them and they should continue to do really well. Now, there are three catalysts that I'm looking for that I expect to help drive oil prices higher, which will reignite the bull market for energy stocks. The first is the Strategic Petroleum Reserve or SPR. Now, you know that the United States has been selling oil out of the Strategic Petroleum Reserve uh, for most of the year, trying to help keep uh, a lid on prices. Honestly, I think it's a political ploy to try to help buy votes um, because it helps keep inflation lower and it helps uh, make gasoline more affordable for day-to-day uh, -day commuters. Uh, but at some point, the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, you, you can't keep taking oil out of it because that oil is supposed to be there for an emergency. And now that oil prices have pulled back, uh, we are going to see uh, a reduction in the amount of SPR barrels that are sold. And at some point, we're actually going to see the SPR adding oil back to the reserve, which means that it's another uh, big buyer of oil in this global market. So we're going to shift from selling oil to buying oil for the SPR, and that could drive prices higher. A second catalyst is China's reopening. Now, China won't say it publicly, but they're really shifting the way that they're implementing their zero COVID policies, which means that they're allowing people to move back and forth uh, between different regions. They're not having the same level of lockdowns that they've had in the past, and all kinds of economic activity is picking back up, manufacturing, shipping, all of that. And of course, that drives more demand for oil. So China is a huge country. Their demand for oil is going to help bump up the price of oil, um, and, and it's going to help, you know, well, it's going to continue this, this dichotomy between supply of oil and demand, and, and we already have uh, lopsided too much demand, not, not enough supply. China is going to make that worse, drive oil prices higher. And then you've got OPEC, uh, and now it's OPEC plus because it includes several other countries, but the, the cartel is insistent upon making sure that they keep a floor under oil prices because it does not do them any good if oil prices drop to the point where they're uh, unprofitable. And many of these countries rely exclusively on selling oil in order to fund their country's budgets and so forth. So OPEC is likely to, especially if oil prices remain low, they're going to continue to cut their production, uh, which let, leaves less supply on the market, which Economics 101 tells us again that it drives prices higher. So those are three catalysts that I expect to help drive uh, oil prices higher. The SPR shift, China's reopening, and OPEC uh, production cuts. Those will all help oil stocks move higher. So again, this is an area of value stocks that I expect uh, to move sharply higher. And I've got my eye on several different oil companies uh, and, and stocks that, that I expect to move higher. And it's really an area that, uh, that I think you need to have exposure to if you're going to grow and protect your wealth heading into 2023. So yeah, J-Rod, that's all I have for today. 
I do want to wish everyone a really happy holiday season. You know, part of the reason we do these calls is so that uh, J-Rod and I can do our hard work behind the scenes. You can reap the benefit of, you know, the research that we're doing so that you don't have to spend all of your time uh, looking at individual stocks, doing the, the market research, the economic research, so that you can spend time with your family, uh, with your loved ones, and, and make good memories, especially during this holiday season. So I know we're all kind of looking forward to taking a few days, maybe a week or two, and, and spending a little more time off the desk and with our families. And I just want to wish all of you guys on the call uh, very happy holidays. And thanks for being part of our community here. And, and I hope this is a memorable season for all of you. We'll be back in the, the new year. We'll keep tracking this crazy market and we'll have plenty of opportunities uh, for us to, to jump on and, and to help protect and grow your wealth uh, throughout two, uh, 2023.